I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto, bringing us the millennial perspective. How you doing, Big Dave? I'm doing good. So this week, our topic was the energy of joy. And on Sunday, Stress Mastery Weekend Edition, Mark Middlestead kicked it off with being aware of your energy. On Mondays with the Super Millennial, David had an episode on be joyful often, be peace always. On Health Huddles, we finished the Real Weight Loss Series with Part 3 Skills. On Meeting of the Minds, we talked on the freedom from fear. And yesterday's Connection Thursday was on the state of joy. And today, we will continue our book study, A Happy Pocket Full of Money by David Cameron Giandi. Big David, you're up. I know I said yesterday that it was going to be the last time I say this, but I promise this is actually the last time. The Right Fit For You lesson and question and answer seminar that we're having is tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Those in the community, just go to events and click the link. If you guys aren't in the community and would like to join, you could email me or you could join through the community. Either way, I'll make sure you guys are set up. Make sure you bring your questions. Coach Jason and Coach Felix have a good lesson for you guys, and they're beyond prepared to answer any questions you guys bring them. So, Tomorrow, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will be going live. See you guys there. And I have one. Next week, I will be out in Deer Valley, Utah. I will be keynoting uh, a YBL event out there. And those that are sending in, you, all the participants that are sending in their purpose and wellness exercise and blood work, we are working on all of that. David will not rest all weekend while he's putting that together. Right, Dave? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but it's excellent. Everything's going smooth. So far, so good, huh? Yeah, it definitely uh, worth it. You know, everything yes. come together. So let's hit this, David. We're at chapter 19. It's titled, One, All That Is. Hinduism taught these lessons in different way. Buddhism taught these lessons in a different way. Tao taught these lessons in a different way. Jesus and Muhammad both taught these lessons in a different way. Today, quantum physics teaches them in a different way. Just about every spiritual teacher, sage, quantum physis, physicist, and religion teach in their own way that we are all one. By acting in that awareness, we move forward fastest, most richly, and least painfully. This is nothing new, but we have often refused to listen. Now in your quest for wealth and joy, you may wish to look at this again. Everything is one, the same being, individuated in different guises. In other words, everything is localized point in and of the source of all that is of God. That's exactly how he wrote it too, people. Nothing can possibly (laughs) exist outside of and separate from the source. The individual and illusions of separation are necessary, as we saw in the chapter on self, but they are only great tools when used as tools. When they are believed in as realities instead of as illusions, they destroy and cause unnecessary suffering and inadequacy. So let us look briefly into this oneness. Once you realize, feel, and act from the position of oneness, you will start seeing you already are one with all things you desire and with all people and things that will bring wealth to you. You will see that you are simultaneously the one making the request and the one communicating the request, the one fulfilling the request, and the one experiencing the manifestation of the request. Hence, you need not worry. This chapter will take a brief look at this oneness, just to give you evidence for it and to start you thinking about it. It will merely start you on a journey 
that only you can take, for that journey cannot be described, only experienced. We are all one. You are one with the source, and nothing is difficult or denied from, by, and to the source. The universe is friendly to your desires. Nothing is impossible if only you believe. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. You can never permanently own anything on earth. Life is change, and one is all there is. Ownership is detrimental state of mind that allows what you think you own to own you. Again, here on earth, what you think you own ends up owning you, possessing you, taking away part of your freedom. When you think you own something, you chase it about to prevent the loss of it, a chase that is fruitless. Hence, it owns you. Instead, think of yourself as a custodian of things until it is time to relinquish them. Whether you like it or not, when the time comes or when your life on earth moves on, you will have to release all these things. Even your body is eventually released from its present form, so enjoy, share, and have these things, but do not think that you are their owner. You can be something, but you cannot really own something. It is all one, and one is always changing. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. Everything and everyone are connected. All life is one. What happens in Kabul affects you, somehow, wherever you are. And what happens with you, the thoughts you have, and so on, affects everyone else, everywhere, somehow. So, for your own sake, think, act, and be as one. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. Superiority and inferiority are not built into people and things. Seeing things in terms of better or worse is judgmental weakness. This is especially a weakness of nations, whereby one government considers itself superior to another, especially in its economy or its governmental system. It is also weakness in social classes. An extremely high number of wars, corporate collapses, and, so and societal divides have been caused by the idea that my way is better than your way. This harmony is costly and never profitable in the long term for anybody. Harmony is extremely profitable. You can avoid disharmony by looking at everyone around you, not as better or worse compared to you or anything else, but as different. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. If you wish always to be in harmony with the incredibly powerful laws of the universe, simply act as if the whole universe is one unit with no separation between it, seemingly separated components. For example, to know how to handle a business opponent in a way that will profit you the most, act as if your opponent and you are one. Treat him or her that way. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. There is not a person alive who is not capable of greatly contributing to the well-being of the planet. Just changing your attitude can affect the world around you. Susan Jeffers. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. It is in your best interest to do your part to ensure that people all over the earth have wealth, consciousness, and joy. Many thinkers and scientists are beginning to show that an individual's thoughts affect the whole world's thoughts. An individual is responsible for what happens in the world and to everyone in it. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. It has been said before in many places that the reason the one chooses to individuate itself is this. In the absence of that which is not, that which is, is not. Think about that. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. So the wrongdoer cannot do wrong without the hidden will of you all. And when one of you falls down, he falls for those behind him. A caution against stumbling stone. A. And he falls for those ahead of him 
who though, fought, who though faster and sure of foot, yet removed not the stumbling stone. The murderer is not unaccountable for his own murder, and the robbed is not blameless for being robbed. Yea, the guilty is oftentimes the victim of the injured. Khalil Kabran. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. Let us revisit quantum physics briefly. We saw that subatomic sub particles are what make up the physical universe. We also saw that these particles have intelligence. And we saw that this pure energy has intelligence. It also has remarkable properties, like being able to be in two places at once, to move from here to there without crossing the gap between, to travel back and forth in time, and so on. We also saw that we are in relation to and in collaboration with these particles. For what we choose to observe is what becomes emerging out of this energy pool. Now let us go back to where God was the absolute only before creation. In truth, there is no such linear timeline. But let us imagine that there is for the sake of study. On this timeline, God was out there before creation, all alone. Remember, in the absence of that which is not, that which is, is not. In the realm of the absolute, there exists only one with nothing else to compare itself against. So for the one to experience itself was not possible. To do this, the one had to individuate into a duality a realm of relativity. When the one did that, there now was this and a that, and duality that could allow experience. We will call this the initial duality. Day could experience itself against night and vice versa. The same was possible with all opposite dualities or individuations, man and woman, up and down, left and right, and each of these dualities had their own similar, or I'm sorry, their own smaller dualities. For example, a woman or a man had the dualities of sad or happy and so on. Now, let us get back to the question of what energy is. From one, we have the initial duality. Now let us call the duality spirit and anti-spirit. By the way, quantum scientists have discovered that subatomic particles all have opposites, a proton and an antiproton, for instance. But in our part of the universe, the antiparticles are not present because the antiparticles destroy particles when they meet. Scientists talk of these as the matter and antimatter of the universe. Now, that part of one that is spirit, individuates itself again into infinite little parts or spirits. Quantum physics, physicists have also seen that, although they call a subatomic particle a particle, it's not really a thing, but rather the building block of other things. And although a subatomic particle has a wave-like behavior and a particle-like behavior, there are no particles actually running around and no waves actually fluctuating. You cannot visualize a subatomic particle. You can only calculate it and experience it. Subatomic particles behave as spirit would. Why do they do that? Now do you see what pure energy is? It is spirit. Everything in this part of the universe is energy. Energy is matter. One and the same thing. E equals mc squared. Spirit is energy. And hence, spirit is matter. You see, there's only no, there are no clear lines of definition and separation. All that is real is really is one. The point is that you can now trace the origins and explanation of the universe and its link to spirit and to all. I am wealth. I am abundance. I am joy. All other things held constant. 
to the extent that an individual or society is one, so will it have wealth and happiness. Again, the greatest advice that can be given to you now is this. Meditate daily. Soon, maybe on your first meditation, maybe later, you will come to experience this oneness and you will be amazed at it. It cannot be spoken of, only experienced. This is a journey only you can take on your own. Meditation takes you in to meet yourself and infinity. It cannot be explained. It can only be experienced. All right, David. This wasn't deep at all, was it? Man, I, I was going to say that. I was like, look, I, I understand things that I didn't think I would understand coming from that. One of the things that it stood out to me that uh, I'm sure you have you know, a good take on it was if there is, then there isn't. But if there isn't, then there is. I was like, yeah, okay, I understand that. Because that was always something I was like, all right, well, a lot of times when people talk about energy or God or something beyond us, just said there isn't that, but then is there? And then it has to, I think that's just such a mind blown for me because it just allows the infinite possibilities of what could be. It's awesome. First of all, Everyone listening, you do not have to understand this chapter. It wouldn't hurt to read it again, though. It wouldn't hurt to sit yeah, down with it. Yeah, I got a little piece and, out of it, but it apart. I definitely got it. Man. Right? But you don't have to understand it. So let me pick it apart a little bit for you. So in this one part, he says, you will see that you are simultaneously the one making the request, the one communicating the request, the one fulfilling the request, and the one experiencing the manifestation of the quest. Hence, you need not worry. This is when we're talking to you about going from knowing what you want, really getting clarity of what you want, moving it into desire, creating a plan, a plan that can be executed, and then taking the desire into intention. Because then when you're in your imagination, you've already received it. And mm -hmm. the stronger that you can do that, the faster that you will manifest it. And so that's what he's saying in there. That's the want, desire, and attention. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I like the where he almost puts it because you see most people talk about judge, jury, executioner in a negative way. But he's almost saying, he goes, you, you got, you control it from the beginning to end. It's just a matter of how you're thinking it, how you're putting the actions and how you're receiving it. I don't think I've ever looked at it in that way because all the time when we talk about that, we're like you're too hard on yourself, you're doing this. It's always the negative output, but it goes back to like what I said. If there isn't, then there is. It's the same thing. There's a positive and a, a way to grow from everything. You have the beginning say so all the way to the end. It's amazing. And so you're right. You know, everything you're saying is right. Dave, you understand this better than you think you understand it. It's just kind of deep. So then he puts in here, he says, you can never permanently own anything on earth. Life is change and the one is all there is. Ownership is detrimental state of mind that allows what you think you own to own you. Again, here on earth, what you think you own ends up owning you, possessing you, taking away part of your freedom. Well, let's look at that. Because we have been culturally programmed through cultural stories that we have to get gain and we have to own stuff. We have to own a house. We have to own a car. We have to own the best stuff. And the challenge with that is you never own anything. And this mm -hmm. is what it means when the Buddhists talk about releasing desire, becoming desirelessness is releasing attachment. Doesn't mean you can't enjoy it. You know, he says... Instead, think of yourself as a custodian of things until it's time to relinquish them. That's a great way to yeah. think it. You can enjoy your stuff. But when you have attachment to things, the reason it steals your freedom is because you go into fear. Remember, you can only have freedom if you master the cage mind. And what protects the cage mind is fear. In the comfort zone. We talked about it this week, right? So as long as you think you own something, you have to protect it. You have to watch it. You have to guard it. You have to do this to it. It's taking away your freedom. You don't own anything. Does that make sense yeah, to you or that, is that too weird? 
No, I think that's a, a, a good way because I've always said I like nice things. I enjoy nice things and I will continue to, you know, buy nice things and do nice things like that until I don't enjoy the same things. But I'm doing it out of enjoyment and not because I want to possess it or let it own me. Because I think that's the big thing that a lot of people are are going to kind of stumble sure. off of this. It's like, well, I can't own things. You can own things. Just let those don't let those things own you. Yeah, and that's one of my big things for my 60s. My 60s decades is about releasing, getting rid of detachment. And it's a lot of things that Linda and I are doing now. So, and then this part here, David. Everything and everyone are connected. All life is one. What happens in Kabul affects you. Somehow, wherever you are. And what happens with you, the thoughts you have, and so on, affects everyone else everywhere somehow so for your own sake think act and be as one so we see in your social media world you see on news you see people talking at the water cooler about all the problems of the world all the issues of the united states all the problems around the world yet they don't understand that if you want to change the world, change yourself. When you change yourself, you change everything. Yeah. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think a lot of people just have hope, you know, and it, I think that's a big issue for a lot. And I know people are going to be like, well, why is having hope a bad thing? Well, if you're not doing anything about it, if you're not putting that energy out there, you're not starting that wave of that ripple effect. Nothing's going to change. I, I was telling somebody the other day, I was like, I want a Lamborghini, but if I sit at my desk with the laptop closed and sit back, it will not pop up. I was like, it's the action of me working on myself, doing what I have to do is what's going to make a result happen. The cause and effect and the cause is putting the work, working on myself. The effect is getting what I put out to what I put out there. And I'll put this out to parents. If you're complaining about your child, and you haven't made changes, then shame on you because there is no way that child can change unless you change. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. when you change, you automatically change everything in your family, in your life, but you change everything. And the reason is, as he was explaining, everything is energy. And when you change, you change the energy and that raises the vibration. And I could turn this into a, a whole Mark Middlestead episode of spirituality, <laughs> but there's no need to because we could keep it scientific too. Because when he was talking about the subatomic particle, right, and how it all works, what he's talking about is energy. He's talking about vibration. We build our reality through our vibration. So if you're having issues in a relationship and you're not doing anything to change yourself, that means you can't change your behavior. So that means your relationship today is built off the behavior and vibration of yesterday. If you don't change, then your relationship of today will be the same relationship of tomorrow. You mm -hmm. can't change unless you change. And it's never about the other person. It's always about you. Your thoughts. Yeah, yeah I think the saying two wrongs don't make a right is perfect in this situation because leaving things too wrong and expecting to get a right outcome from your kids. If that's the example that's being set and that's kind of like the norm, the programs that's being given, you can't get upset at them for following the stuff that you've inherently taught them. Exactly. I, I, they, and, and, and I don't, I listen, it's not easy being a parent, but it's, it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing. It's about you. It's always mm -hmm. going to be about you. And when you can realize that, you can change anything. You really can. Yeah. Anything else, Dave? It's all I got, man. No, I think that was a, a this is definitely one that um, allowed, I'm glad it allowed <laughs> some more time. If you got the book, definitely go back. Because like I said, I understood a, a, a part of it. And I think that's the cool part about books and, and being at a certain state is you're going to pick up what you need to pick up for where you're at right now. So if and you only understand three sure. lines of it, those are the three lines that you were supposed to understand. If you understand more, 
great, but really sit back and analyze and don't just be like, well, I didn't understand nothing. Go back, dissect, sit with it. I think this is going to be a really good chapter to keep going over. Um, but no, nah, I think I'm good. That's a good way to end the week. Yeah, and those in the community, if you have questions on that chapter, hit hit us up. we got a lot of people in that community that can answer the questions mm-hmm. on that chapter. Now, he goes next week back into abundance. I love the way Gianni teaches. He teaches that he brings in some heavy stuff, and then he'll go right back into, let's yeah. build some wealth. He's gonna, So <laughs> next week, we'll be talking about abundance. So next week, we have a special guest host, and the topic is on complacency. And our guest host will be Mark Middlestead. And Mark and David will be bringing you some absolutely inspired episodes. And I want to give a quick shout out to Mark. Thank you. Um, It helps me out a lot. Gives me a little bit of time to focus on my group out there in Utah. And it gives me a little needed break. And it gives you guys some fun. Because you guys like each other. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. We talked today, and sure. the, the stuff that we got cooking up for next week is going to be awesome. Mark and the Millennial so. is going to be something else. I'm actually looking forward to listening to those episodes. That'll be fun. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. Those links are right below the show. If you could give us a review, you're a new listener and you're enjoying this, this is how we get the word out and we move this messaging is by getting these likes, getting you to subscribe and getting you to give us a nice review. We really, truly appreciate it. As always, until next time, stay inspired.